Your party travels away from crossroads down a long and winding path. The woodlands seem to be, well, thick, positively bustling with life. You didn't expect this much greenery and well, livelihood this close to the big city, but here it is. You take step after thoughtful step, wandering amongst your new company as uh, Delphi and Jillian pleasantly chat behind you. Hmm. Ooh, what do they chat about? Did you see earlier? Like, okay, so Celine talked to Levin apparently, right? And Levin, Levin, he said that he was out to go get sprinkles. I don't, I don't think she understands what she did. <laughs> they like look back and forth. Levin oh, is on a no. quest now. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little sure worried, but I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Velvet's gonna. Velvet's gonna try and approach some of these good bean bunnies. Yeah, you immediately just wander off into the woods on your left. Um, you see a small creature just foraging around. It picks up a flower in its mouth and just starts to squidge away from you slightly. They seem to frolic around the flowers on this stone. That's a good stone. Can I take this apple? Uh, add an apple to your inventory. It's... I feel like it should be better than the pickle. <laughs> As the doctor takes the apple, she disintegrates. <laughs> uh, um, uh, out of curiosity, I'm assuming the the uh, weapon was not this way? Uh, well, more or less, actually. Really? Uh, this, this is one way to go about it, yeah. Okay, I'll um, take your word for take it. A, take a sharp left into the wood... into the... into the ditch. <laughs> Where Ned is like climbing down. <laughs> I gotta go make sure he's fine. Ned, honey, what are you doing? I gotta. Can I come with? He gives me anxiety. No, of course. I couldn't agree more. Ned? <laughs> Ned has found a movering rock. Okay. Looks like it. What is that? Yeah, it's one of these. It's called a minor crab. They, uh. Well, they dig up rocks and then they put them on their backs. Kind of like a hermit crab, except they're, uh. She kind of points down at their claws. They actually look incredibly sharp and weirdly muscly. Yeah, they strike with an almost piston-like force. All right, Ned, just... Atticus looks up from this skull mushroom. <laughs> oh, you're looking at the skull mushroom, eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody who's, somebody who's familiar with herbs could probably, like, tell you a thing or two about that, that type of mushroom. Go for it, Ned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, roll herbology. It's like very super nice. moss. Uh, Velvet, you actually recognize these almost immediately. These are very unsafe. These are called Cappy Reds. They're very oh. deadly. Oh. <laughs> oh no, don't, don't. She like reaches out to like grab you and pull you away. It's like, eh, I can probably. These are, <laughs> these are real bad. They're not even red. They make you red if you touch them. The uh, the minor crab is mostly content to just like burrow its way into the dirt and sit there. Its eye stalks kind of appraising you, Ned. You look at each other with cold, unblinking stares. <laughs> Ned will move on. <laughs> Atticus puts on his safety glove and takes Ooh. one of the mushrooms, puts it in a little like thermos. Is this right. like? I've played Breath of the Wild. I know that a ring of rocks and a slightly displaced <laughs> boulder might hide a secret. Uh, I think that was oh, just a boulder is, that Levin put um, there. Delphi actually looks kind of worried looking at this. That, that Levin what? It's a boulder that Levin put here. Um, you just put it here? Just because... Because, uh, Delphi kind of, like, looks, scratches the back of her neck, looks down, wilts a bit, ears down, eyes down. Well, uh, how much do you believe about, how much do you believe in fairy tales? Yes. <laughs> her eyes light, her eyes light up seeing a yeah, kinship I... spirit in velvet. <laughs> well, okay, so there's a legend around these parts. There's, there's a big legend, right? Rings of mushrooms attract a certain creature. Fairy circle. Fairy circle, exactly. Except when they're mushrooms like these, Delphi points down at them. It attracts something more nasty. Something called a moss walker. It's a creature that wanders around collecting lichen and other bad things. They're pretty gross. And if you don't wash up as a kid, it'll collect they're, you they're too. They're pretty gross. I don't think they're real though, Delphi. Like, they're totally real. No. <laughs> I feel like I would have been collected if that were real. <laughs> <laughs> Celine just kind of like eyeballs you. Yeah. Do, do these ones also make you red? Uh, no. I'm pretty sure these are just. Well, Delphi like leans down and takes a look at the side of the mushroom. I. 
I guess I know a thing or two about herbalism, but she like looks over almost expectantly at Melvin. These are <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> you know a little bit more about these ones. No, you yeah, you actually do. These uh these are called wind umbrellas. They're uh they're te they have a tendency to get caught in like well updrafts and blown upwards, almost like an umbrella caught in a windstorm. It's a very clever name. Um, these are they're very resilient and they'll regrow even if you take a few. Uh, you get the feeling that the rock was placed here to permanently disrupt the circle. She takes a couple of them. They're uh, famous for increasing the potency of alchemical draughts. So, oh, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take. A bunch at like one in every three. Oh, Velvet, thank you for destroying the fairy circle. <laughs> no problem, though I have to say I'm a little disappointed I'm not going to get to see the moss walker. That sounds interesting. I mean, I could move this boulder easy. Do you want to <laughs> see it? I mean, I already took them. The circle's ruined. Uh, yeah, they're still like most of a circle, and if anything, it'll give it more reason to come and kick our ass. Oh, we, <laughs> we wouldn't want to attract any kind of fey creature who would be accepting of most of a circle. Yeah. You hear scraping sounds from Ned. <laughs> He's currently bending down and trying to pet the rock. Delphi's <laughs> <laughs> sticking to you, Selena. I'd like to see you move that. Hmm. <laughs> seeing <laughs> seeing Selene and Delphi together, Velvet just takes a couple steps back. <laughs> Selene. Delphi. Yeah, she's like, she's looking up at you. You're like an inch taller than her. Eyes are glittering. Thwump, her tail goes back and forth one time very slowly. <laughs> Ooh, what's... There's something metal over there. And there's mud. Ooh, <laughs> mud. They both tromp right into it. Plomp, stomp, tromp, womp. Uh, Atticus, you sort of kneel down and you notice, um... These two, uh, these two minor crabs are sitting in an almost even formation with whatever the hell this thing is. Uh, taking one, like, look at it, though, you can tell it's a furnace. It's partially sunk in the ground over here, but it might still work? Like, not work work, but it might still have operable parts. I wonder what this <laughs> thing was supposed to combust. Uh, Atticus is gonna see if he can, like, open it up. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah, you pop it open. Um... If you had to guess that uh, this is some sort of furnace that was meant to burn up wood from the surrounding area, taking taking a like look around, you notice the tiny bits of rubble and ruin littering the uh, ground around you. If you had to guess this is some sort of like woodsman's shack that was meant to maintain this area a while back, but everything's fallen into disrepair other than this furnace. Oh, that's kind of sad. I mean, it's something I'm not used to seeing, but I was kind of hoping that there'd be less wreckage out here. Well, you can always make something new from it. I'm <laughs> going to cannibalize this for parts. Fantastic. Velvet Fantastic. is sliding down this log into the mud. Velvet, as you, like, you climb up and the moss makes a surprisingly effective slide. Everyone else is a little shocked to see you immediately dirtying your very nice clothes in the muck. It's fine. <laughs> the crabs like move into the mud as well and hunker down. Obstacles. Mud fort. She, she now does her best to tactically avoid them. This is level two of rock slide. Ned is currently like, he, he's just speaking aloud at the, the, the crab. Take rock. Take the crab. all. The crab <laughs> looks at you. Julian's standing there completely silent, just watching this, like, huh? Eh. <laughs> the crab's just looking. It starts to move away very, very slowly. Ned shifts over and tries to, like, put down his uh, arm so the crab would, like, walk up it. <laughs> Give me a, uh... What are, Ned's, what are Ned's stats, even? Give me a classic Ned check. <laughs> Good old Ned check. All for Ned. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> fucking damn it. <laughs> God. <laughs> the fucking bug quietly just moves up your arm as if it were the ground, attaches to the back of your helmet, suddenly your head feels significantly heavier, but two long eye stalks poke across it on either side. That is <laughs> hilarious. Ned has found friends. Yeah, no, it's... Feel free to move and or control this thing. I'm gonna, gonna make you an equip for this. <laughs> Ned, friend to all animals. You like my new hat. 
That's that's wonderful, Ned. Thank that you. That's actually pretty cute. Yeah. <laughs> She's kind of sheepishly walks away. Curiosity, how are you going to move this thing? I mean, probably. Um, hmm. She a she of, thinks a for of physical strength. <laughs> some, you know what? Uh, magician never tells her tricks. You know. <laughs> so if you if you could look the other way, actually hold oh, okay. on. If I move this thing, this might upset the rest of the crew because they didn't want to deal with. Um, the fae creature that might be involved with oh, no, no, no. all this. She leans in. The fae creature only comes around at night. Uh, I didn't tell anybody, but yeah, this this mushroom circle, it kind of glows at night, and uh, you can see a big mossy shape shambling through the woods. It's super real. Nobody believes me though. Well, I think it's important that we prove your case. So <laughs> now, now uh, look the other way. Why don't you go hang out with Jillian and look the other way, huh? Okay. There you go. <laughs> she she wanders away holding her staff out in front of her. Jillian, mm. I was told to look over here with you. Okay. <laughs> you suddenly hear a boom as the boulder vanishes, appears out of the side of this hill, and rolls past the two, like sending just a curtain of wind up, like all their cloth is like flown forward. Delphi's just staring straight ahead, still smiling. <laughs> A curtain of wind, you say? Do these mushrooms fly up? Ooh, yeah. All every single mushroom that remained is now sitting stock straight up, except obviously the ones that were crushed. Celine just kind of dusts her hands off. Ta-da! Uh, Delphi slowly turns around. My goodness, you did it! How did you move it so? Fa How did you move it so far? Uh, magician. I told you. I can't tell you. Magi it's a super oh. secret. Did you use magic? Maybe. <laughs> she, like, cups her own chin and kind of scratches it. Ooh, like, what type of magic? Oh, uh, just, you know, uh, just the, your, your basic uh, telekinesis. Uh-huh. You, you needn't worry about it too much. Um, but l listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a master of my craft. We need, a, we need to talk about what spells you know. Oh, we could probably trade notes. I want to hear about every single spell you can cast. Oh, sure. Um, I should. <laughs> oh, my God. A cloud of soot billows up from the uh, the furnace as Atticus finishes ripping out parts. You come away with two parts. Um, these are going to be specific to machine upgrades, but they're very useful. You gain a ventilation part and a combustion part. What'd you Neat. find there, kid? Uh, a th an air mover and a blower upper. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. She just nods, thinking she understands, but she doesn't. Uh, Delphi waves from the, uh, waves from the mucky shore. It turns out Celine's a boulder mover. Like a earthbender, I guess, sort of thing. <laughs> uh, my, my powers vary greatly, but I do not have teleportation. Wow, that's such a specific thing not to have. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a mage myself. I don't know if you'd know, but I... I specifically lack a lot of powers as well, actually. Jillian's oh. just there with these two tall people talking over her head. I forget that Jillian's actually, like, super short. Hey. Hey, where'd Velvet go? Um, uh, bunnies. Uh, oh, I think oh, she no. she finished sliding and she went off to, uh, I think she wanted to look at the rabbits. Oh, okay, Is that what, yeah. That's what those are called, right? Well, yeah, no, rabbit'll, rabbit'll do just fine. I, I'm sure they do look like rabbits. Uh, those are dragons. <laughs> Delphi, like, squidges around the muck barely and starts to move over towards Velvet. The, um... Velvet is, like, meditating under the shadow of the rock next to a rabbit. You see a couple feet in front of her, there's, like, a big muddy patch in the grass. You take it, she probably, like, laid down and rolled like she was on fire to dry the mud off of her. It only, it didn't work that well. Yeah, you all approach as Velvet's just sitting under this rock with a bunch of, like, little rabbity creatures gathered around. It's quite a sight, actually. Huh. She looks like a mountain guru. Oh, she is just caked Ooh. in it. She meditates like Levin. Is this something Levin does? He just rolls around in the mud and then hangs out with bunnies? No, mostly he just closes his eyes and sits there, not really moving or breathing much for, like, days. Days? <laughs> Days. Okay. <laughs> Tweets Velvet around. like Velvet like hears you guys coming and it's like, oh okay. And then kinda like pops an eye open 
and sees that like you are all closing in around her in a <laughs> semicircle and starts backing up against the rock. All right, that, that yeah, that's that's you know what it's it's at this moment I realize that we're being really creepy. Is this a breach of etiquette? Should I do something else instead? Oh. I mean, we're kind of surrounding her and she got her back Ooh. to a rock. Yeah, that's. I uh, wanted that's to sit down across I like from your her hat. and and Thank have you. her like open her eyes and I'm suddenly there and be like ah. <laughs> 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 Did you find anything under the rock? Shade. <laughs> Fascinating. Velvet, as Ned walks away, you just see an eye stalk focused on you from the top of his helmet. <laughs> she she looks at the eye stalk as he walks away, and then she, like, kind of looks down at the rabbit, like, maybe I could get a hat. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit looks up at you. I think around these parts we called them, they were... Delphi starts to think for a second. That's right, they were called... Cat's ears? Cat's ears? Cat's ears. Cat's ears. But where I'm from, we used to call them dandelion dogs. Oh. Why is that? Well, they kind of look like dandelions. Or at least I thought. And I saw real dandelions. (gasps) I don't want to find out. (laughs) I mean, that's fair. I was just curious. (laughs) Uh, Celine Celine hands um, a couple of nice pieces of bread to Velvet. If you want to, like, pull the whole princess thing and feed these little guys. She, she like kind of like, as you reach out to give her a pile of bread, she's like, ah, what are you doing? Oh, oh, I already have plenty of pocket bread. She pulls out muddy shit. Oh, (laughs) right. I'll trade you. You want this? No. (laughs) Okay. But I think the dandelion dogs would prefer not muddy bread. Don't forget, I've thing. always got my hazardous bread sterilizer if you need to use it. <laughs> Take this bread. <laughs> <laughs> she takes the bread. I imagine you're just pride rocking it up there with that other bunny. Uh, Atticus is looking around, <clears throat> climbed up the rock to get a better view, uh, and points Ooh. to the northeast. Guys, there's greener bunnies and bigger rocks over there. Might be worth investigating. Uh, Velvet, if you want to give if you want to give me a roll for uh... animal friendship. Yeah, yeah, animal. Give me that classic animal friendship roll. Oh, plus D six. Oh. Well, <gasps> oh, no. no. Well, hang on. <laughs> I gave myself a free six. Let's see how badly I really did. Okay. <laughs> you uh, you extend the bread to the dandelion dog, and it just scoots into the distance, running away. They begin to scatter and disappear. I guess they didn't like cinnamon. That's on me. I'm sorry. He kind of watches run one runoff nostalgically. Well, I'm sure there's plenty more of those little guys. Yeah, thanks for the bread. (laughs) Celine feels bad. She feels like that was her fault. I'm gonna take a look at these tiny eyeballs. Those aren't eyeballs. I think those are more mushrooms. These are actually sort of a subspecies of the Cappy Red. They don't have the big, deadly, like, skull on them, which is the usual uh, indication that you're eating a Cappy Red. They're also a little less poisonous. About a f- half as effective. A cappy red <laughs> light, if you would. Diet cappy. <laughs> Atticus, can you um can you use your bread breadener for a second on these crumbs? He he takes out the little toaster oven looking device, inserts the bread at one end. There's like a <laughs> <laughs> And they come out brittle and chalk white, but clean of mud on the other side. Uh, thank you. She takes them back and takes out a mortar and pestle from her bag, crushes them up, mixes them with a little bit of the residual mud water, and uh, uses the stark whiteness to paint skulls on these. And then on this rock, do not eat skulls. <laughs> oh, that's a good safety tip. It takes her a while. Oh. She, she writes, do not eat beat 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 draws a skull so what are those little green guys little green guys Delphi was like wandering over to Ned she suddenly stops and turns on her heel what's what's Ned doing by the way you see him walking in place trying to pass this being <laughs> <laughs> oh this is a uh, yeah this is an unhelpful anteater it's in the way it's eating some ants it's probably better to go around understood <laughs> <laughs> we need to get the ants in our pants power up to go through that way. You could climb over the log, but I don't think Ned works on that logic. Ned will try. 
He then begins walking in place against the log. <laughs> just makes that like just Pokemon make... noise if you run into yeah, a wall. Boring, just... boring, <laughs> boring, boring. I like to imagine if it's like Ned will try and you just plow through it like a knife through butter. <laughs> Don't be skitters back over as you guys look at these creatures that are like they seem to be mostly minding their own business but based on Delphi's panic she uh maybe not everything's okay oh no oh no no oh no oh no no oh, no she kind of kicks back at you're hit in the face by a tail yeah oh, oh did yeah. they uh, oh they got into it again oh no you look at the uh you look at the little creatures they all seem to be carrying around, like, lumberjack equipment? Okay, um, well, okay, uh, somebody, somebody asked if they could, if they could access a little shed over there, she points right over okay. there, um, to, to use, you know, our axes, maybe cut some firewood, and maybe some other things, uh, yeah. they might have forgotten to lock up. Oh, oh, oh. Y yeah? Well, these what's are, the problem? Uh, these these little guys, they're uh, they're bloom shades. They're they're nice, they're friendly, they're really mischievous, they don't know how to use tools, and are a little dangerous to people. They're tricky. A oh, little well, bit. I mean, they'll never learn how to use tools if no one shows them. If they want to take up the honest craftsman's life, we should try and help them. Delphi gets it like she gets this look on her face like she hadn't even considered that once in her life. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no, that's an okay idea. Uh, okay. I mean, Ned if thinks if, basic craft materials are needed. I mean, yeah, if these if these guys aren't normally a problem, they just don't understand what they're doing. I mean, I'm sure they'd like to know. Yeah, you're probably right. Hello. What are you working on? This one's just hitting this rock with an axe. Hmm. It slowly it, turns around and looks at you, cocks its head to the side. It looks like you are trying to use an axe. <laughs> and I guess takes a look at the markings where it's hit the axe into the rock. Hmm. I don't think that tool is sharp enough for this material, friend. <laughs> it looks back at you, looks down at the axe, looks over at Ned. <laughs> Would you like to learn how to axe? Picks up the axe, like reels back with it. Uh, no, nope. <laughs> I'm ready with a portal to just like this guy through a tree. <laughs> That's against the first rule of axe safety or bladed tool safety in general. Vel Velvet, seeing this thing, like do the. Like, yeah, it's not hard enough to cut. Immediately looks Ned over. She's like, oh, I know what that look means. <laughs> then again, I suppose <laughs> Ned's already wearing a helmet. But first of all, you should be wearing some kind of protective headgear. When you strike something with a blade, small fragments can fly away and, and they can strike you in the face. Also, <laughs> your stance is incorrect. Ned moves over and puts him into a better sense to swing harder. <laughs> Velvet is like, this thing is like, has the axe over its head vertically and is like, why isn't it swinging down? And Velvet's holding the shaft. <laughs> Delphi breathes the biggest sigh of relief seeing Velvet do that. She flashes you a thumbs up. Atticus is going to drag a log from over here. So, what you probably should try to do... um. Yeah, so, well, you might have dulled that, actually, by striking the rock, but why don't you try and see if you can cut this in half? It, like, it stops trying to swing the axe at Ned, stops, turns, and aims it straight down at the log. Let's, uh, eh, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, it strikes the side of the log and immediately cuts it in half. It looks incredibly pleased with itself. You did Ooh, it. That was well done. They're almost One of too... 20. <laughs> they're almost too perfectly even halves, but in a condition where you were crafting something for precision, you'd want to make sure to mark out uh, your intended point of striking first so that you can get the cut that you want. Velvet leans down and draws a chalk line. Delphi starts just mm, back over a big bundle of logs. <sighs> wait, wait, actually, wait, wait, hold on. She, uh, she takes off for a second. She sprints over here and grabs <laughs> the anteater. Die. <laughs> <laughs> she drags over this uh, log that wow, was next she's to the strong. end. Delphi kicks up an entire wave of dust. Uh, uh, a rope slung around this log. <sighs> it's she, just like home. She, she drags it all the way over here and plops it down, perspiring, dusts her hands off, ears flick up, bright smile. 
This is actually so useful for me. I just thought I, I usually chop all this up on my own. If if they could help out, that would be that would be great. Why don't you mark out um the the length of log that you want? Uh, you, me or do you want to? Well, do you want to? It looks them like you do have it. them uh, chopped to some sort of specification over here. They're all pretty similar size. Oh, thank you. She she flashes you like a really bright smile at the phrase "pretty similar size." I've been I've been working pretty hard at this actually. When I'm overwhelmed by all the mayoral duties back in the crossroads, I tend to come out here and chop wood. You know, get the blood flowing. So knowing that I'm doing it right, more or less, well, that's sort of encouraging. Pat's the side of this. You guys didn't notice, but as you were walking away and chatting, Velvet drew X's on your person and an O on the log because this thing was once again making eyes to size up the material you're made out of. <laughs> All right, little guy. I don't know if you're aware of this. There's going to be some like tutoring going on. This one over here has. <laughs> this one over here has like a gas-powered something or other, <laughs> Okay, Celine. give me a little more space. It basically has a long, like, almost protrusion oh. of wire at the end that flails around. I heard the leveraging of a combustion reaction. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this is more your expertise, kid. I am not getting near that. Delphi, uh, uh, Delphi wanders over to these three and, like, it gets them going. This one briefly considers, sw like, thinks about swinging the log at the, like, rock, how little damage it dealt, thinks about swinging the log at Ned, also sees the X in its mind for, like, wouldn't cause enough damage, looks at <laughs> Delphi, thinks real hard. She Velvet just turns to, she, she really quickly... Does her best, like, okay, how do I hat you? And flips her around, and there's an X on her back. <laughs> they all nod, looking at each other. <laughs> what kind of noise do these things make? Are they just They're silent? They're actually, it's weird. They're dead silent. Um, Taking a look at them a little closer, Velvet, uh, you notice that they're not... You expect a biology, you know? You're a doctor. You're looking for you know, what pumps blood. You're looking for like what type of uh what type of general shape it has, if it's humanoid, if it's like some sort of animal. These things seem to be more or less inhabiting the cloth that they occupy and the shadow within without real substance. Delphi mentioned that they were bloom shades. You're not sure if that means shade as in ghost or like they, shade as in the Do they bloom hide. in the shade? Like if you leave some cloth around, are they just like fairies that inhabit it? She's beaming up at you again. <laughs> or down at you, yeah, I Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not tall. <laughs> Jillian in the background gets a big look on her face. <gasps> I could try that. You do know the fairy tales, Velvet. I know some of them. Fairy tales are neat because most of them are true. She she started that happy and weirdly ended it sad. Same thing with Delphi, weirdly enough. The two of them kind of just looked down. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Atticus, uh, you're futzing around with this creature and his uh, weird device. Yeah, does device. it have like a chainsaw? It's not a chainsaw. It's more like a weed whacker. Um, it's Ooh. like, imagine a sort of archaic weed whacker where um, the end of it isn't like... It isn't like a curved blade or anything like that. It's just a long spoke of like wire and it flails around almost like you uh, you took a bicycle spoke and attached it to one of these things. Um, the sides of it appear to be bladed or slightly serrated. This thing probably cuts like shit. <laughs> oh, it's like if you took an engine, one axle and the rims with no wheels. Huh. You should um... You should come uh, hang out with your friends real quick. We're going to talk about how you can cut things properly. Hey, I'm going to head inside and see if there's helmets. Yeah, yeah, look for some... Um, I, I guess I could probably fashion something, but okay. Celine, you, you quickly throw up in the shed and you look for helmets. You notice there's a helmet with fucking ear holes cut in it. <laughs> wow, okay, that's incredibly convenient. <laughs> Just uh, are there one. Are there, like, gloves as well? Oh, there's only one? Hmm. Yeah. There's uh there's one with the ear holes cut in it. There's, you know what? I'll get I'll throw you a bone. There's uh there's two additional spare helmets. We, we've I got most of what we up. need. Um, is there like a bowl by chance? Uh, a bowl like a like a like a bowl bowl. Uh, it's like a bowl uh, like a bowl of cereal. Uh, no, probably not over here. Hmm. Okay. There's nothing else that I could like maybe make shift as a 
temporary helmet for one oh, of these guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're going for. Uh, uh, yeah, There's no, definitely you, a give, bucket give in there. A, give me a scrounge check. Hell yeah. Okay. No, not only do you find a bucket, you find the best damn bucket. It's got like... It's it's got a it's got a handle that this uh, one of these creatures could flip down and successfully like use as a chin strap. It's perfect. Oh, nailed it! She walks out with his arms full. All right, kiddos, safety first before we start swinging those things. She like oh, drops thanks, them Celine. down and backs up. <laughs> All right, yeah, everyone, uh, make sure you've got something on your head. You want to make sure to protect your face and also your hands. They all they all nod a single time. Uh, and then, with their haphazard, like, goddamn construction crew gear, they all lay into this log, one after the other. Huh. Ooh. 